you've corroborated what we knew, that the, there are record numbers of people crossing the channel, 300 in 2018, more than 24,000 now. Um, is, it, is the point that you were really trying to make that you think that Priti Patel is being too soft on undocumented migrants? Uh, good morning, Trevor. Good to join you. No, the point I'm making is that the Home Secretary is comprehensively failing in this policy area. And it appears the Prime Minister agrees because he seems to be putting the Minister for the Cabinet Office in charge of a review of this. But the Home Secretary's failure is a dangerous failure. We have thousands of people risking their lives in these most dangerous sea lanes, the most dangerous sea crossing in the world. And if the rate continues as it is at the moment, if the rate of increase from last year to this year is repeated again next year, we'll have as many people risking their lives in the channel as there are people in Priti Patel's constituency. Her incompetence on this issue is dangerous. Yes, but let's just get clear why you think Priti Patel is failing. Is she failing because she's not getting people ashore safely? Or is she failing because she's letting anybody ashore at all? It, what, what is the problem with what she's doing? That she's failing to stop the people getting here or that she's allowing people to be endangered? Let me tell you exactly what the problem is and exactly what I would be doing as Home Secretary instead. We need, first of all, to have a workable deal with the French authorities, which Priti Patel doesn't have. All she's interested in is diplomatic spats with the French government. That isn't uh, what we need. What we actually need is to be looking not only at the coast, not only at the coastal patrols, but we need to be looking as well as what, at what is happening away from the coast, disrupting these vile people smugglers on the routes that they facilitate. People do not become refugees in northern France. This problem is about a far wider issue than that. Second, but the issue of safe I still routes. Don't quite, the government should I still reinstate... Don't... No, hang on, hang on. Trevor, let me just, let me just yeah, finish. Yeah, Trevor, finish let me just finish. Second, the government should reintroduce the dub scheme, which is a safe route for unaccompanied children, 3,000 unaccompanied children was meant to help, close then after 480. And finally, thirdly, let me just finish on this point, the government should reinstate the international aid budget, the 0.7%, and the Department for International Development, which tackled why people become displaced from their homes in the first place. So that's what I'd be doing, and that, I'm afraid, is what Priti Patel is failing on at the moment. Yes, forgive me, uh, I, I still don't really understand what your objective is here. Is your objective to provide uh, safe travel for 25,000 people who want to land in Britain? Or is your objective to stop 25,000 people who want to land in Britain uh, coming short the beaches? My objective is to stop people risking their lives in the English Channel in the first place. One person risking their life in the English Channel is one too many. I, I've, I've been to Dover. So, so your Trevor, point is you want to, you want to, you're, you're basically you want to boats. stop... You, you want to stop the, the you want to stop people coming here. That's the basic that's the basic bottom line here. No, hang on. No, that, that, that's that's not quite what I'm saying at all. And I've already mentioned the issue of safe routes, and I've already said that would be a fundamental part of what I would be doing as Home Secretary. But what I'm also saying to you, Trevor, is that we have to prevent people risking their lives in the English Channel, because that is what is happening on a virtual daily basis at the moment. And Priti Patel is comprehensively failing to prevent that from happening. OK, well, there's, there's a perfectly reasonable way to stop people risking their lives, which is that when uh, our uh, our boat, our uh, navy, sees them in the channel, take them aboard and bring them back to, uh, back, back to Dover. So that's fine. 25,000 people landing on the beaches. That's OK? Uh, saving lives in the English Channel is, of course, OK. And, and by the way, people who demonise 
the Royal National Lifeboat Institute for saving lives at sea should be absolutely ashamed of themselves, frankly. Once people's well, lives are at risk respect, nobody's doing in that here. the sea, we have to make sure we save those lives. The point I'm making is we need our policy to be calibrated in such a way that people are not risking their lives in the channel in the first place. And that is where Pretty Patel is failing comprehensively. All right. Well, let's let's just talk about um, the proposals that uh, you put out today. Um, when you talk about safe and legal routes to help prevent people from using people trafficking routes, um, an example of such. I mean, how does that work? Well, I'll, I'll give you I'll give you two specific examples, Trevor. Let me give you the first example, which I mentioned a moment or two ago, which is the Dubs scheme, named after Alf Dubs, who escaped Nazi persecution on the kinder transport in the 1930s. That should be reinstated. Everybody across Parliament understood that would have helped 3,000 unaccompanied children. The government closed it down after only 480. That needs to be reinstated. Secondly, we really do need to see the government's action on the Afghanistan resettlement scheme. We've had Operation Mitting, where our armed forces did a magnificent job in that airlift uh, from Kabul airport. But what we've seen from the government is nothing in terms of how they propose now to help those people that they've promised to help. And my worry is that unless the government gets that right, that safe route right, we are going to end up in a situation with a possible tragedy next year of seeing people from Afghanistan in the English Channel unless the government gets this right now. Avdab's scheme was, as you say, uh, in a sense, inspired by his own experience as uh, a child of the kinder transport uh, who escaped um, Nazi occupation and so on. Um, but what is different here is that the children that we're seeing in the channel have their parents with them. Um, uh, if the scheme were implemented, it would also follow, by the way, it wouldn't just be 3,000 children, it would be their parents, wouldn't it? Um, and that, that's, that, you, that would be part of your scheme, would it? Well, look, there's already, we're already looking at you know, the issue of family reunion, but let's not just mix up uh, issues here, because... The people who've already... Well, it's just a natural uh, consequence of what you suggested, isn't it? Well, well, it's certainly family reunion is something that is already being considered and looked at. But the point I'm making is we mustn't mix up issues here in the sense that those who've already arrived here, Trevor, that you've just referred to, clearly the issue for them, and 98% of those who arrive claim asylum, is that their asylum claim is dealt with quickly and fairly. And one of the other major problems for this government is what they've done to the asylum system over the past 11 years. If you go back to 20. 14, 87% of asylum claims were dealt with within six months. By 2019, that had fallen to 20%. The government made a catastrophic blunder in taking away the six-month performance target in our asylum system. And what we're left with now is a situation in our asylum system where claims are taking, in some cases, many years. It's not helpful to anyone in our asylum system. It's not helpful to the taxpayer. It is a failure of this Conservative government. Um, I don't know if you heard the Health Secretary uh, talking about, uh, first of all, the uh, essentially institutional or systemic racism in health services, not just in the UK, across the world. And I wondered what your thought was about that. Uh, and secondly, the prospect of um, more people than the 5.9 million um, who are waiting for treatment in the NHS. Uh, pick your either of those two issues. Well, firstly, in terms of the disproportionate impact of healthcare on black, Asian and minority ethnic communities. That's something Labour has been raising throughout the pandemic. Uh, Keir Starmer appointed uh, Baroness Doreen Lawrence uh, to look at this and the next Labour government will introduce a new Race Equality Act to look at precisely those disproportionate uh, outcomes. Uh, Trevor, and I think that is absolutely essential and a top priority that we do. As regards the National Health Service in England this winter, we are in a situation where this week 
the government with completely the wrong priorities will try to drive through another yet another top-down reorganisation when we need urgent action in our National Health Service now. Here in Wales, where I'm speaking to you from, where Labour is in government, we've set out a winter plan. We are focusing here in Wales the Labour Party on that uh, investment to go into social services to reduce pressure on the NHS throughout the winter. The government for England doesn't have a plan to deal with this and should be putting its foot to the floor, put the pedal down on the booster program to get that booster program really up to half a million jabs a day. That will be one of the most effective ways of reducing pressure on the NHS in England this winter.